Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video I'm going to be talking about adding threads in 3D printed parts, or tapping threads in 3D printed parts. I don't see a lot of people doing this, and this is kind of a method that I've been doing for a long time since I've kind of gotten more into 3D printing, and I think it has its applications. It's not for every single situation or every single part, but there's definitely some applications where it makes a lot of sense. Uh, this is going to have a lot of discussion and talking in it, as usual, so please feel free to use the chapter, skip around. Uh, if you want to go straight to the section where I'm doing the tapping, yeah, feel free, go for it. Um, so yeah, let's uh, dive right in. For me, I do a lot of um, mechanical or functional parts with 3D printing, and so I use a lot of fasteners in them, and there's a lot of different options that you have for fastening a couple components together that you've 3D printed. I'm just going to kind of give a quick rundown of some of the different options that you have. So first off, you can just simply use like wood screws. You can use a wood screw, a sheet metal screw, or even a plastic screw like a plastide or trilobular screw. Um, those third ones are, tend to be a lot more expensive. You're probably not going to have one hand, and it's not something you can get at your hardware store. So let's just focus on some wood screws. Wood screws are great, and they work as a nice fastener. However, um, you might be mating it with something else that has, um, you know, machine screw sizing, whatever. So wood screws are just kind of the sizing is a little bit different, and sizing the actual hole in your 3D printed part gets a little bit tricky because you're actually using the fastener itself to cut the threads. You're basically undersizing the hole, screwing this in, and then using the threads to kind of push away that material. And so for this reason, these are really only good for a single application, you know, just putting it in there once. Once you take it out and try and put it back in, it doesn't really work the same way, at least that's what I found. And also sizing the hole gets a little bit tricky because if you go on the outer thread diameter, there's nothing to engage. If you go on the inner diameter, you're probably gonna crush or break the part. So you kind of need to go somewhere in the middle and sizing this gets a little bit tricky. So that's kind of the uh, pros cons of wood screws. You might have these on hand. These are good in a pinch and they're perfectly fine. Um, then we have the brass heat set inserts like these little guys. Use a soldering iron, press them in place. I use these all the time. However, I do a lot of prototyping in um, 3D printed plastic parts. This is an example. I've made like five iterations of this. This is a jig for work and there's a one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there's at least six fasteners in this and you start going through a lot of heat set inserts. So that's one downside is they are consumable. You can't really get them back out easily. It's maybe not worth the time. The other thing about these heat set inserts is if you have a very thin profile like um, these little parts that I'm working on, I would have to make the hole a lot larger for that heat insert because it you know, is a sleeve essentially that fits inside of there. Not only that, I'd be a left with a very thin wall on the outside. That part could end up deforming or maybe bow out on the outside. So it doesn't always make sense. They're also not good for thinner components. So there are just some geometry considerations with brass inserts. They have kind of the best holding force and they're the neatest and cleanest to use, but they're consumable. They do warp and kind of deform the material a little bit and they don't always work for every application. So we've got those. Um, then we also have captive nuts. So square nuts or nuts that you're kind of pressing into the parts. This is another example. We've got square nuts all around there for these holes. This is a really nice um, application. However, um, you do once again have a consumable part. You can obviously pop these back out, but if you're doing several hundred of these, and eh, maybe it makes more sense just to tap them in place. Who knows? Um, but it is another thing to consider. However, like in this case, I don't really know how I would get the nuts inside of here. So sometimes the geometry doesn't make sense. I guess I could do a hole there, 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 but like this one's gonna be really tricky, that one's gonna be really tricky. So you don't always know if you're gonna have the right geometry to fit those in. I could maybe make nuts on the back side, press in a hex nut on the back side. So, you know, it's more of a geometry thing using these press nuts, and sometimes the geometry just doesn't make sense. Now if we look at tapping, tapping is nice because you don't need any extra parts obviously other than the tools and you can generally do it in just about any hole. So it is nice and clean. 
The downsides to a tapped hole is it's going to be very uh, weak in the tensile strength region or the tension. So like let's just say the fastener is in like that. This is the tension. Think about pulling the screw straight out versus shear is going to be the force in this direction shearing against them. They're going to be perfectly fine for most shear loads because you're ultimately relying on the plastic itself for that shear, but then when you're under tension, you're actually relying on the thread. So that is something to consider. So at this point, you've talked it over, you've thought it through, and I think you're ready to start designing your 3D printed parts with tapped holes in mind. So you need to figure out the proper sizing. Um, the good news is with 3D printing, as long as everything is properly calibrated and you get nice, accurate prints, you should be fine using just the standard hole sizes. If you're using SolidWorks, you can actually just use the toolbox and the hole wizard and just say, hey, I want a 1032 tapped hole and it will properly size the hole, which is fantastic. If you aren't doing that, you can just look on Google, you can get a thread chart, any of those number of things. You just say what is the hole size for a 1032, M8, 632, whatever your hole size is. Generally speaking, you're going to want to use a coarser thread rather than a finer thread. So like in a, um, I'm going to do Imperial here, but if you have a 1032 versus a 1024, you're going to want to go with the 1024 instead of the 32. You want bigger, chunkier threads rather than smaller, finer threads. I think like M8 comes in an M8 1.0 versus a 1.25, go with the 1.0, which is the coarser threads. Um, I have a link down below for a tap chart. These are fantastic to have in your shop if you do a lot of threading. Um, I have one up on my wall, which you can see here. I'm including a nice little video of that. I found that I don't really need to do any adjusting beyond there, so that should be fine. You want to make sure that you're printing with the proper number of walls because we're actually going to be cutting into those walls. I just use the two walls, standard. If I'm doing a big chunky fastener that maybe needs a little bit more strength, you might want to increase the number of walls from like three or four if you really need some extra bite because that's what we're actually going to be cutting into, so just kind of expand it out a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but on the leading edge, this is where I'm going to be tapping into. I have like a 0.5 millimeter chamfer on there, so maybe add a fillet or a chamfer just so that tap sets in there nicely. If it's perfectly um, squared off, it doesn't really start or fit in there as nicely, but it fits in a lot nicer on that side. So just add a little bit of a fillet or a chamfer. 0.5 millimeter generally works for me. And then make sure that you have sufficient thread depth. You know, if this part was one millimeter thick, I'm only going to get like one or two full turns on there. That's not enough on the threads. I generally recommend one to two diameter. So whatever the diameter of the fastener is, you're going to want at least one to two of that in terms of your depth, if that makes sense. So for like a quarter inch fastener, you're going to want to have at least quarter inch or a half inch depth to make sure that that properly engages. And then lastly, the thing you have to keep in mind is with blind holes, you're not ever going to get like the first one or two turns on that in a blind hole. Uh, blind hole is one that just kind of goes down and stops, a bottoming hole. Um, you're not going to get threads on the very bottom of it. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing your design. So cutting threads in plastic is pretty much identical to doing it in any other material like metals, things like that. Um, but just a couple of little things that you might not realize instantly. Cutting fluid. Uh, when I first started doing threads in plastic, I didn't use cutting fluid because I figured, you know, I didn't need it. But oh my god, it works a lot better with something like Tap Magic. It really is magic. Um, the cutting fluid really, really, really helps. Um, the other thing is when I'm doing aluminum, I tend to actually just put the tap in my drill and just use the drill for in and out. And that actually doesn't work as well in plastic. You end up melting the plastic. You need to make this stuff as cool as possible and not introduce any heat. It will deform a lot quicker than you think it does. Also, the highest quality, sharpest taps that you can find. I generally like to use these spiral flute taps. If I do have a standard straight tap on hand, I will use that. And that's what I'm going to be using in this video. But a good spiral flute tap is it really helps out a lot. You need to clear your chips out frequently. 
Um, these threads are going to be a lot more fragile than a standard metal thread. So if this is just packed in with a bunch of debris, it's not going to cut as good of a thread. So, you know, this is all just kind of standard stuff. Go slow, clean off the chips, use cutting fluid, use the sharpest tap you have, and the first couple threads are going to be critical. So I'm just going to throw a thread in here real quick. Just throw some cutting fluid on the actual threads there. And then we're just going to start it. And the first thing I do is check it in one direction. So that looks lined up. Check it in the other direction. That looks lined up there. And then we're just going to go nice and easy. And you want to make sure that you're not putting too much pressure. You're not forcing it. And then this is pretty much as simple as that. So there we go. Nice, beautiful threads. Go a little bit further and then come straight back out. But as always, if you're a beginner to tapping, the first thing you have to realize is those first couple threads are critical. Clean that off and now we have a nice thread. So you don't want to go in sideways. Normally if you're doing like aluminum or steel, the tap will kind of sort of find its way in. You know, if you're going in a little bit crooked, it will kind of want to line up. It will not do that in plastic. It, you, can, you can tap like that if you really want to. It will allow you to do that. So you got to make sure that when you feel it grab on that first little section, look at it one way, look at it the other way, make sure you're lined up. So I'm just going to do one more because it's, it's very satisfying. So we're going to go in. I'm giving it a little bit of pressure initially, getting that first quarter turn. That looks lined up. That is a little bit off, so we'll just kind of adjust it. And then just slowly turn it. And you're making threads. How cool is that? And, you know, you can't use enough cutting fluid for this. I know it sounds weird. It's just plastic and it's really soft, but it really, really does help. If you don't use cutting fluid, it will melt very quickly and you'll get nice deformed threads, which you do not want. So simple as that. And also make sure that when you exit, you don't just kind of rip it out, pull it out nice and straight. These are relatively fragile plastic threads. And there we go. We have nice threads in our part. Where is my set screw? Yeah, feels great. No wiggle, no wobble. Nice and tight. Um, this is a part that I'm using to join two aluminum extrusions together. It's just a set screw, just kind of one of those temporary parts. I'm not going to waste. I have a bunch of these. I'm not going to waste a bunch of brass inserts on this. It's just going to be temporary. And this is, I think, a perfect example of why you would want to do threads in plastic. So here is my application for these parts. I need to kind of temporarily make this extrusion a little bit longer. So I've got my two 3D printed pieces. This will go in about right there. It's fine. We can really, really tighten this down. The threads are stronger than you might think. There we go. And these parts also fit pretty tight. And there we go. So now I have those together. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them all the way around. I'll do that off camera. So lessons to be learned here. A um, couple little things. This is just kind of a summary recap. Use a larger fastener than you think you need. Go up to the biggest one that you think you can handle, the biggest one that will actually fit in the physical size. I could have done a quarter inch, but I end up going up to a three eighths because I could. So go up to a larger fastener, use coarse threads, always do it by hand, always use cutting fluid. I recommend Tap Magic. If you have taps in your shop and you don't have Tap Magic, Go buy some Tap Magic, of course. Of course, there's links below. Um, use the sharpest tap and the highest quality you tap you have. I like these YG1 taps, but any good quality um, sharp spiral flute. You might even want to have two sets, you know, one set for plastic and one set for steel. Who knows? But a nice sharp tap and make sure that, you know, I guess not like what I'm doing right here, that your load is generally in shear, not under tension. Um, you're going to have the best results like that. For this setup, PLA, this will eventually kind of weaken and creep and fail, but this is just a temporary setup and that's a perfect perfect example of when to use threads, but if you have a shear load where the screw is just kind of there holding things together, 
perfectly, perfectly fine. And as far as size, I didn't mention this earlier, but for imperial sizes, 440 is the absolute smallest I would recommend. I think kind of in that 832, but really the 1024 is kind of um, the more ideal size and up. And then for metric, I think anything like M6 and above. But I've definitely done uh, M3 and M4 successfully. Just you can't really put a whole lot of load into that. So yeah, tap in plastic a lot more. Um, it works. I see so many people doing brass inserts and 90% of the time, I just don't really think it's necessary. You can get by with doing it just like this. And this will give you a good idea. It will dig right into the aluminum, no problem. Um, it is a very nice, strong, and sturdy joint. So hopefully you got a little bit something out of this. I know it was pretty long-winded, but hey, that's my style. So anyway, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye.